So let's start with the head center. Here you see it again, if you are a number person. This is the mental pressure to fuel our thinking process. Okay, so imagine it like this. Whatever we take in through our body needs to be stored somewhere. It is stored in this, you know, gray matter of the brain in the back usually. And it's not translated yet. It's just blah, gibberish. And we won't uh, process or conceptualize or translate all of it. Just bits. We have millions of thoughts and maybe 300 we, we can be aware of a day. So this is the storage. It's the storage and also the pressure that says, okay, we need room. Something needs to, you know, conceptualized here. Here's the pressure. You know, it's like the tax office that says, hey, we really need your numbers. They put a lot of pressure on you to conceptualize something, to analyze, to investigate, to research. And this is the gates, you know. So those heads and are about confusion, mystery, and doubt. It is about the pressure that, cre that uh, is created through confusion, you know. And this is correla correlation. It has a, co a biological correlation to the pineal gland. Okay, the pineal gland is all, it's like this translation from this dark, not dark, from this gray matter of the brain into the Ashna center that conceptualizes, you know, where we have the neocortex, the visual cortex, the anterior and posterior pituitary gland. So this is the storage and pressure. If you have that defined, then the natural state of this, if you are yourself, the natural, <coughs> pardon, the natural, natural state would be to deal with mental pressure and inspiration on your own in, in whatever design you have, you know, cyclically, in the now, logically, this would be your way. And if this head center is defined, what did we learn? It can only be defined if the Ashna center is also defined because there needs to be two gates. So the head center, when it's defined, always comes with the Ashna center, always. It cannot be alone, hanging somewhere. It always comes with the conceptualizing part. You know, it's like you have a hard drive and the software that can read the hard drive. Only the hard drive alone wouldn't make sense in, the, in regards of life. So you always get both. So here in the natural state, this is a creating a mental pressure in the world around you also, but also inside of you to grasp and understand things. So you have fun grasping and understanding things. It's easy for you to grasp and understand things with a defined head. It's not that you seek for it. It just happens naturally because it's not open. It's not, you don't need to put effort because it's automatically because it's chemistry and mechanics. It's like your heartbeat. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to put an effort that your heartbeat is going on, you know, that it continues. It just happens. Also, the defined head in the natural state knows that confusion, doubt, and clarity is a natural process. Yeah, when I'm confused, I know it will fade. You know, I learned that over the years. It will fade. It's annoying. I don't like it, but it will fade. It's transitory. And I also know that these processes have their own timing and their own resolution. You know, the 61, 24, for example, this channel of the thinker with the gate of return, you know, remember like always again and again and again and again and again and again, repeating the thoughts has a very different timing that the, than the channel of abstraction where it's about confusion, the 64, 47, for example, you know. It's a different timing. The one is always in the now, poof, and the other one takes time, maybe years to come with, come up with clarity. And the defined head has the ability to uplift and empower others with insights and inspiration. I mean, what I do sell is inspiration, guys. This is my job. I sell inspiration. I'm inspiring people. And usually I have to do with mostly usually have to do with uh, people who have, a, have an open head and ashna. Almost exclusively. There's not a lot of people with defined head and ashna that uh, work with me. There is some, but the majority is open. 
Also, this head center helps to be an outer authority for others because it's connected to the Ashna center. Outer authority is never inner. Outer authority means I can bring up, conceptualize these things, have the pressure to ask the questions that inspire you or give you some impulses to uh, realign. It's an outer authority. Any kind of person that uh, helps you in any way can, is in that moment an outer authority. You know, when this person really can help you, that you be yourself, you know. And uh, with the defined head, remains receptive to stimulation from outside. So I have also openness. I have an open 61 in my head. So I'm open about mystery. I stay open about the mystery, about the unknown, because I don't know everything. And I know sometimes I say I know everything because I'm, I'm a 1-3 and I'm stubborn as fuck. But inside, I always know I don't know everything, Okay. And I try to be open. It's not so easy when it's defined, you know. Try to be not generated when you're a generator, when you have a defined cycle. It's not so easy to just, okay, I don't generate now. I just need to be open. It's, eh. But occasionally I, I try and then there is a lot of people, especially people with an open ashna who bring up new things that I was like, wow, that's interesting. And then I take my time, process it and so on. But now this is the thing that I actually like more, you know, fuck this natural state stuff. It's too sweet and nice. Let's go to the not self states. In the not self, the defined head turns mental pressure in on themselves. They get really crazy. They get mad. They can have psychosis. They can have wild dreams. They can have migraines and headaches. And they can put this also on others, you know, not always consciously, but they can use this from a position of power, you know, to put some people under pressure to feel smarter or better or whatever. For sure, it's possible. And this will create anxiety because the, the pressure goes into the, into the Ashna center and the Ashna center is about anxiety, mental anxiety. It's like, oh shit, maybe, oh, maybe I should do that. And, oh, and also can create this for the other, you know. Did you really uh, uh, shut down the oven before you left? I don't know. You know, they can confuse you a lot. Also mental depression, self-doubt. In the not-self, uh, this defined head can attempt to resolve the pressure by outside action. No, I have this, I'm confused. I need to do this now. Instead of just sitting with it. Okay. The best thing ever that I can give you is for anything, sit with it. If there is a, re a response, it will automatically be done. No, sit with it until it's done. You don't need to do anything. Uh, and obviously, you know, being very hasty then and, and, and making mental decisions and tries to find solution for personal problems mentally and acts upon. Okay. So there is this question, this confusion, this uh, logical doubt, and I need to do this about it so that this, this logical doubt and confusion goes away. No, 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 no. This is not what you should do when you have a defined head. And obviously also not if you have an open head. This will all automatically will happen because it's chemistry, it's your glands, it's your biology that automatically makes this happen. And can be incapable of remaining patient, resulting in missed opportunities for inspiration. Yeah. It's like I have this pressure, I need to act now. No, wait. And now we come to the undefined head. Or as I said, open head. The natural state is no mental pressure. No mental pressure. Whenever you feel like you have mental pressure, there's somebody around you who has mental pressure and you take it in. You should not never deal with mental pressure. It's, you can't actually. It makes you mad. So the natural state is you explore ideas and inspiration coming from all directions. Oh, that's inspiring. Oh, interesting. Never heard that. Oh, that's an interesting question. I don't will answer it. I don't will think about it, but it's interesting. It tingles, you know, it's interesting. And ob obviously when you uh, become wise in this center, in this undefined head, you have this potential to see who is inspiring, who is confusing, who has the right questions and who is just a scumbag, you know? And you do not act on mental pressure. You do not act on it. Because you know, ah, that's not my pressure. It comes from the outside. It comes from Thales right now. Or, you know, from the transit or from whatever. 
And, you know, you don't jump on this. You don't take on the pressure of others and try to answer things. Because the not self here is always trying to answer everybody else's question. You know, you were laying in bed at night and suddenly, because your neighbor is behind your wall and has a defined head, suddenly, <gasps> how actually do ants breathe? And you cannot sleep anymore because your pressure will be so high that you need to go back to your phone and Google it. And the thing is, while you Google it, three new questions come up and you will spend two hours instead of sleeping. Uses mind only as outer authority. With this, I mean only for sharing, not for making decisions. Enjoys the pressure to know more without becoming identified or without even having resolution or an answer. You know, it's just like, oh, it's interesting to know. Yeah, but I don't act or I don't need, I don't seek. If it comes, it comes. And if you have an undefined head in the natural state that you will achieve when you decondition, You enjoy questions and confusion. You finally can enjoy that because you trust that it will all become clear and you don't need to do anything for it because it's not your job to make it clear, to gain, to create clarity, to give the answers. It's not your job. Maybe if your body says yes and it just comes, okay, but you don't need to put an effort or do it or strategically try, try to do it. Not at all. We don't. But now the not self, the not self put together easily from the undefined head is losing focus. Uh, where was I? What, what is interesting? What is inspiring now? What did you just say? Because you get lost in all of these other questions that pop up in your mind that create pressure that you don't need answers for. So the not self in the not self state. You easily become lost or overwhelmed by doubt and confusion because you identify with this. So you're doubting more than somebody with a defined head. You try to resolve the questions. You try to release mental pressure through action. Or I'm, I, okay, I have, I have such a migraine. I need to have a walk now. I need to uh, do this, do that, blah, blah. Sometimes, yes, having a walk can help, because, but not because of the walk because of the aura that you just left, who brought this pressure. So whenever you feel, oh, something is different, go 20 minutes out of the aura of the other, come back, ah, and then you can see that it's not yours. It's almost like it's laying in the room with full light. You're like, oh, wow, that wasn't me. So super nice trick. 20 minutes it takes usually to... Get it all out. Other things when you're emotionally open can take two, three hours, sometimes a day. It depends how, how strong you hold on to it. Also, not self-state, compulsive avoidance of mental pressure or excessive involvement. So it can also mean that you go totally against all of this mental pressure or questions or confusion. You totally try to avoid it and you never want to have to do anything with social media and you don't want to have anything with any, to do with anything about information, you know, or you get totally involved, excessive involved, you know, like totally, I need to know everything. This is extremes. It's about the balance. So if you have an open an undefined head, ask yourself, try this, uh, to write this down for you or, you know, just have it in, in your, in the back of your mind. And whenever, uh, you face a situation with some people, you just go, am I occupied with questions that don't matter for my own life right now? Am I trying to answer questions? Am I trying to resolve confusion right now? Because when you do this, you automatically become aware of what's going on. And when it's the case that you try to answer questions, it will stop because you just caught your mind fucking you up. And then it will go, okay, sorry, and goes back into his little room where it should be, where it belongs, you know, not in the control room. It should belong into the departure of measuring, not controlling. 